everybody. The company of last year's Tony winning Best Musical, The Book of Mormon, everyone. Let's hear it for him. Well done. What a great way to start the show. Welcome, everyone, to the 66th Annual Tony Awards, or, as we like to call it, Fifty Shades of Gay. <laughs> I had to. I had to. It's my third time hosting the Tony Awards. Thank you. And just like with movie sequels, the third one's where you really start seeing quality. So... <laughs> no, it should be a great night. I just want to say with total sincerity how proud I am to be a part of all of this. I get to come to New York, I get to immerse myself in theater, I get to see brilliant shows, that, uh, that truly amazed me with amazing talent that you can't see anywhere else in the world. And I always leave just completely awe-inspired and invigorated. So truly, congratulations to everyone. But mostly to the winners. Because they're better. Honestly, though, theater's the best, isn't it? You get to go. Yes, you come to places like this, you go and you sit in the dark for two hours and you just escape. Instead of thinking about your own childhood problems, you watch a childhood fairy tale come to life before your eyes. Instead of stressing about your own relationships, you watch two people from different parts of the world fall in love and make beautiful music together. Instead of worrying about the news of today, you hear about the news of yesterday, delivered by overly attractive, hyper-acrobatic 35-year-old, 15-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what if life was like that all the time? What if life were more like theater? What if everywhere you went, you heard a band? <laughs> Wouldn't life be so much sweeter if you could cue the weather with your hand? Cool. And what if all your questions had rhyming answers and you never left home without your backup dancers? What if life were more like theater? Wouldn't life be grand? What if life were tightly written and divided into nifty little scenes? You're my whole world. The world's a pretty big place, Amanda. <gasps> supposed to mean? It means I'm leaving you. No! It's true. Mamma mia! Ha! And just as you were split, your apartment disappeared by unknown means. Thanks, mysterious people in black clothing. And, and what if no one thought that there was something strange about a magical seven-second costume change? Six, five, four, three, two, one. And then, apropos of nothing, there were crazy dance One's diction were crisper, crisper. And secrets were told in a shouting whisper. And the only problems that mattered were your own. Hey, you guys want to hear me sing about my problems? Yeah! I love my fake friends. <laughs> what if everyone took it for granted that British umbrellas were all enchanted? Wow. Well, you can hardly see the cables. And, 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 and your next door neighbor was the legendary Patty Lapone. Hi, Patty. Hi, yeah. What if I were more exciting, more dramatic, intriguing, intense? If every moment were nail biting, feared with ever mounting danger and suspense. And just when you were in the most precarious position, you would get a brief intermission. Hi, Carlos. My 
nice crowd? Uh, I like the matinee better. When? Act two! What if all of your colleagues were hotties? With freakishly flexible bodies? And none of them needed to sleep or eat or pee? Actually, you know what? I'm feeling better now, so I'm good. Because sure? yeah. I picked the last verse. Nope, nope, I'm good. But you sound tired, Neil. You sound tired. No way you threaten me! What if life were more like theater? With the simple motivation and the plot? Don't we all wish life were neater? But we know that in reality it's not. No, life is bleak and brutal, and we carry from the cradle the awareness that it's futile and invariably fatal. We model without respite through the sadness and confusion, or we huddle in the cesspit of our madness and delusion. Hold on! Hold on! We've been lizards, Mr. Patrick Pierce. Don't be a downer. This is the Tony Awards. And remember, the sun will come out tomorrow. Really? You know, you got a point, little orphan know-it-all. <laughs> but, um, since you're not back on Broadway till next fall, why don't you go, uh, you know, find your parents? <laughs> Big finish! I'm just saying. <laughs>